Okay, it is day two for the Draw Along. If you missed yesterday's show, you can always go back and watch it. Just search for Draw Along with Kyle and you're going to find, oh my gosh, about 100 episodes of this show, if you can believe it. Anyway, thanks for joining me today. Hope you brought with you something to draw with, like a pencil or a pen or a marker or a stick or a nice katana sword that you can dip in some mustard and then, uh, you know, cut through some beautiful carpeting that your parents have. Whatever, you can draw with everybody you like, as long as I don't get in trouble because of your actions. Now... It's starting to change here weather-wise. I'm really excited because it's starting to warm up a little bit. I'm thinking about beach stuff. I'm thinking about heading out to the warm weather. Uh, speaking of the beach, hey, where do sheep go on vacation? The Bahamas. Oh. It's one of the worst ones yet. Okay, it is time for us to do some drawing. Now, let's say hi to some folks in the chat. Who do we have here today? Uh, Sherry, what's up, RB? Bruce, Clever, Mercurial, Golden, R. Oh my gosh, and Steven's here. And I see Misty, hey, and uh, oh my gosh, who else? Samantha, all these nice folks joining along. If you're watching on YouTube, remember, on behance.net uh, slash live, that's where you can um, join me with the chat. But no worries, you can watch wherever you like. Um, I won't be monitoring the chat on YouTube, but hey, if you want to draw along, that's great. Thanks for watching. All right, now, let's get cracking. To do these drawings, you need to be able to do three simple things. If you've been here before, you know what those are. They are a straight line, a zigzag, okay, and a curvilinear line like that. Could be a C curve, right? That's what we call a shallow C curve, and there's a nice, uh, oh, sorry, this, this is a tight one right here. This is a shallow one, right? Look at that. Could go this way, that way. Curvilinear, curvilinear. What a fancy word that is. All right, now let's get cooking. Today's drawing it's going to be a fun one, and as usual, I'm going to keep it simple so everyone can follow along and just enjoy themselves. Your drawing is not going to look like mine, and that's a good thing, okay? Every drawing is going to be unique. We're going to give you a chance to customize the drawing as well. We're going to start with a nice horizontal line like this today, all right? That's going to kick things off for us. We can all do that, right? Does it have to be perfectly straight? No, sorry, Bob, it does not. Don't you worry about that. All right, I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing to do next. This is going to be a nice little curved line right here, okay? Tiny little C curve, the tiniest of C curves. Here it comes, just like that. And see how it ended up on a bit of a vertical there? Well, that's good, because I'm gonna carry it on down like that, okay? And we're gonna do some symmetry here, which means we're gonna do the same thing on this side. We're gonna mirror what we just did. We're gonna have a little C curve, and then pull it on down, like so, okay? And there you go. There's the beginning of our drawing. What on earth could it be? What could it be? Alrighty, now right here, I'm gonna make a little dot. <laughs> All right, now what's that dot for? Well, it's gonna let me draw a curve up this way, okay? But I wanna know where to start, and I want it to be kind of in the center of here. So, zoom out for a minute, watch this. I'm gonna curve down like that. Now that is a shallow C curve if ever I saw one. Now don't worry, if you, if you dip a little lower, just bring this line down to meet it. You just want those lines to touch, okay? That's all you want. And you want that line to kind of end up at the same height as that. Alrighty. And we're gonna do it again, because why not? Here we go, we'll do it again. Maybe a bit more. Kinda looks like something, doesn't it? We're gonna do the same thing on this side. We'll go up and over and again. Mm-hmm. Kinda looks like water to me. Okay, but what do I know? Um, next, next step just inside this C curve, okay? I'm gonna draw another vertical line. It's gonna come up like that. And just inside this C curve, more symmetry action, okay? We do love that symmetry, it's pretty cool. And now it is time for some C curves and they're all gonna be joined together. Bunch of little C curves, check it out. C curve, C curve, C curve, C curve, C curve. Hmm, that's a lot of little C curves, isn't it? Ah, oh, yes, yes indeed. How's it going, everybody? Let's see. Taxi in the octopus garden, the submarine. Are we already guessing what we're drawing? Amazing. Could be a submarine. Yeah, it could be, it could be. I wonder, I wonder. A sea monkey peeking out of the water. These are all great guesses. It's a surprise, gang. Okay, you ready for some more of these sea curves? We're gonna do them up this way. Okay, check it out. Boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. These ones are different sizes, see that? And I'm gonna bring them down in a pattern down to about here. So here we go. Ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum. Okay? We're on this side. Da ding da ding da dong da ding da dong. Hmm. 
Well, now I think it's getting to be pretty obvious, so maybe I should speed things up. Oh, that might have been a little too fast. I'll go more slowly. Okay, next step, circle right here. Ba 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 boom. And we're gonna move to the right, and guess what? You guessed it. We're just gonna repeat ourselves. Okay, just repeating ourselves left and right. Color it in right there, and color it in right there. Oh, I think I know what's going on here. Ready for some diagonal lines? There's a one right there, and another. Oh, I see what's happening here. That's a reflective surface. That's how we indicate that that's a reflective surface. Pretty cool. Leave yourself a little space here and draw a little line like that. Come on over. See where this line is? See where that line is? Look what I did. I basically just continued it with space here and space there. Space here, space there. Bloop. There you go. Couldn't be easier. And then right here under the water. One, two, three. One, two, three. See? Mmm. Little C curve right under there. All right, I figured out what's going on here. It's a person in the water wearing a mask. Okay, now, this is going to be an interesting little bit. We've never done this before. A little underwater, why should I put this? Distortion, I guess is the word. Because I'm gonna imagine that I'm following along this line and it's gonna loop on down and then connect again here. So we're basically drawing this person's jaw. But I wanna do it with wavy lines. I wanna do it with wavy lines. Now, one way to do it is to just start here and start moving your way down, uh, down this way. But I prefer to give myself a starting point like this so I know how far down to go. And then I can work my way up or I can work my way down towards it. All right? But I don't want to just start blind and start moving without having a target. So from here, I could just go wavy, wavy, wavy like that. All right. Leave a little space and go the other way. Wavy, wavy, wavy. All right. See that distortion? Now, just on the outside of where this mouth is here, just look at the eyes. Come on down straight from the eyes and then go, leave a little space, wavy, wavy. Look at the eye right here, come on down, wavy, wavy. Mm-hmm. See what we're doing there? Some really fun distortion. And then here, wavy, wavy, wavy. Wavy, wavy, wavy. All righty. Now, that's pretty cool. We've done some underwater distortion, right? Okay, because things are gonna get all wavy down there. And now, this is such an easy thing to do. Check this out. You do a big C curve up and over, and then you're gonna do another C curve, and you're gonna come over, and you're gonna cross it. Up and over and cross, like that. All right, and zoom in here, check it out. Another little circle and a dot. There's one little fishy right there. Mm -hmm. Come over to this side, and instead of doing exactly the same thing, I'm going to do this. Shallow, okay, and then come back. And we want those to cross. I can always cross it after the fact, right? Let me just put a little dot. So I don't want to repeat the same kind of fish over there. And then I'm going to just put a small one right here going the other way. So that's what we call asymmetrical balance, if you want to get fancy about it. Right, big fish over here, slender, and then a small one right there. Just kind of break stuff up. I'm gonna put some little dots there for that fish, like bubbles. That's cool. You can do that. Bup, 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 bup. Whatever you want. And hey, why don't we, you know, customize this drawing? Now, it's up to you. You can make this person uh, in any kind of beach you like. One thing I like to do is do a big curve right here. Imagine it's passing behind the head. Pick it up over here and do that more asymmetrical balance for you. And then I just go one and a two and a three, okay? Some kind of like beach plant. And then I'll overlap, which means behind it, see this? Put another little shape. And then check this out, we just go, whoa! And then throw these in there like this. A little palm tree back there. Same thing over here, right? Maybe do four leaves over there. Right, another one with three. Okay, just to break things up, make it a little different. Maybe out from here, there's another little palm tree, but it's leaning down this way. Okay, you could do that. And finally, here they are. 
little seagulls in the air. Check it out. Got your little beach scene. This will get you all ready for summer, right? Spring and summer are on the way, folks. They are on the way. How about that? All right, so anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Um, that is our draw, uh, draw along portion of the show. That's the you draw it. And uh, we're going to move on now to the art vocab. And you know, sometimes I like to do a little education for you all. And so today we're going to do trompe l'oeil, uh, French word, French expression, pardon me. It's a couple of words. Trompe l'oeil means to fool the eye in French, en français. And uh, let's just read this. It's a visual illusion in art, especially as used to trick the eye into perceiving a painted detail as a three-dimensional object. Here we have a great example of this, Bruno Logan. And uh, what trompe l'oeil painters do is they create images that make you feel as if you could sort of reach in and actually touch um, and hold or interact with the objects that are in the painting. Most of the time, at least traditionally, we understand trompe l'oeil paintings to be still lives. Now, people have taken this art form, they've moved it to like sidewalk chalk art, for example, when it's viewed at a certain angle, it looks like you could fall down into a chasm or things like that. But traditionally, oil paintings usually done on canvas, but made to look hyper-realistic and have a lot of depth to them. So here's a great example from Bruno Logan. Um, of course, this cardboard box is not a cardboard box. It is part of the painting. It's actually painted onto the canvas. Um, and oftentimes with trompe l'oeil paintings, you'll see them create some kind of a framing device for the painting, okay? And uh, that will create this even greater illusion that you have the frame and the piece of uh, and the painting that are separate when in fact the frame itself is painted as well. Let's check out another example of Mr. Logan's work. Here's a great one. I'll zoom in on this one so you can see this. So again, look at this. The frame, then we have this idea of something that's been tacked up to the frame, like a couple playing cards, right? Uh, just torn off there. So they'll do things like this. A lot of texture, a lot of torn edges, a lot of different surfaces, reflective surfaces, such as this glass of wine, right? A lot of shadows always, you know, uh, indicating a light source. And then doing things like this where you have a shelf protruding, um, which makes it feel like you could really set something on top of that, reach under it, etc. Um, so, you know, if you're interested in doing this kind of work, I will tell you, uh, it is painstaking work, painstaking work. You really have to be great at observing, you have to be great at mixing color and great at painting fine detail. Uh, but some people really get into this um, and it can be a great thing. Also really fun to just look at these trompe l'oeil paintings. So uh, that is our oat art uh, vocab for today. Um, it's not our oat vocab. Our oat vocab is something we do at breakfast time. Alrighty, now, thanks for checking that out and I uh, hope you learned a little something there. Um, we are gonna move on to the animal and activity. This is of course where you will suggest for me an animal doing something funny, strange, bizarre, unexpected, weird, whatever you like. Example, we had a frog playing a video game from uh, last week, right? That was a good suggestion. And uh, yesterday we had, look at this, a meditating alligator. How fun is that? Those are fun. So in the chat, okay, on Behance, please do suggest for me uh, an idea for the animal and activity so we can begin drawing that together and uh oh 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 listen to that hey you guys know what that sound is right that is our alarm for appreciation station and today we are appreciating bruce bruce ah uh, think way back to that time when my time machine was broken you probably remember this and you came over to my garage and it was your idea to turn on the electromagnetic transponder graph setting to full hyperfluid overdrive and then decrease the tronometer blips to a frequency of 7,500 zippo watts, which allowed everything to work again. I really wasn't uh, thinking along those lines, so you're a pretty clever fellow, and I appreciate it because we were off to the Stone Age in no time, thanks to your quick thinking and your uh, very technical mind, so thank you very much. Okay, now back to drawing. I will look at the chat for your suggestions for the animal and activity. What do we have today? Let's see, what do we have today? A dog stargazing. I love it. We have a worm reading a book. Not a bookworm. Haha, <laughs> I like that, Sherry. Let's play on words. Why not? Why not? A wolverine reading a comic. Well, I could do Wolverine the comic character. Um, that's funny, Chris. I love it. Uh, however, I'm not sure I know how to draw a wolverine. Um, I know they kind of look like badgers or something, don't they? 
What else do we have? Um, a mink. Stock trading. That's a very interesting one. My goodness. Um, a deer tossing a hunter with its antlers. You go, deer. I'm not a big fan of hunting myself. Um, sparrow airlifting a polar bear from a snowbank. These are crazy. Amazing. A fish fishing for a human. You know, we did that once, Misty, believe it or not. A moose playing a banjo. A moose playing a banjo. Moose, moose, moose. Oh, what the heck? Let's do the moose playing a banjo. Steve, I like it. I like it. I like it. All right. Got to grab my lighter color. So let's grab the blue. Here we go. And we're just going to go a hair lighter than that. This will be my sketching color. And uh, let's just draw this moose here. And by the way, yes, of course, my moose is going to look like uh, Bullwinkle because that's kind of like the only real reference I have for how a moose looks. So you have to forgive me there. Okay, and he's gonna be playing the old banjo. So let's do this. Let's see. Now he's gonna have his arm like that across the front of the banjo there. And he's gonna be have those. Gonna have to use fingers. So of course, you know, this is not gonna be like a real moose, of course. And we're gonna do those those round round banjos that you see, you know. I think the only kind is round, but I could be wrong. And I'm just, you know, I'm not an expert on banjo stuff, but you know, I dated a girl once whose dad was quite the banjo player. Story for another time. Okay. Let's get fingers wrapping around here and a little thumb right there on that fretboard of the banjo boop, boop, boop. hey guess what I finally after you know wanting one for oh <laughs> 30 years I finally got myself an electric guitar that was my little Christmas present for myself this year what do you think about that I feel really cool owning it um, but maybe not so much playing it. But I mean, I, I play a, a, an acoustic at a level of like maybe three out of 10, I would say. So with the electric being that it's really kind of a very different instrument, to be honest, um, I'd say I'm about at a one and a half to two. So a lot of work to be done. All right, let's give him some, some boots, actually. I feel like, I don't know why I feel like he needs to be wearing boots, but. That just makes sense to me. I don't know why. Why the boots? Alrighty. There we go. Now, we're gonna shrink him down a little bit. He's, he's just a little bit on the on the big side here. Whoops. Um, because, you know, I don't wanna run out of room on the canvas and I don't know why you did not see what I'm doing over here. So let's slide him over this way. All right, Moosey Moose, there you go. Oh, can't forget. Um, Whatever's happened up here, I don't know how banjos look up there, but I'm just gonna do that. Oh, banjos, did they have five? Five or six? How many strings do banjos have? Five? Some of them have five, four? Uh, let's do, I think I've seen five string banjos. One, two, three, four, five. We'll just do that for now. Okay, how about that? That's cool. Steve Martin, the uh, comedian, actor, writer, is quite the banjo player. If, if you've not heard him, it's really quite good. He's gonna have a little flannel shirt, you know? I think that's the right look for this guy. Okay. Playing outside in the fresh air. Kinda wanna make his eyes just little circles like that. I think that's kinda, kinda cute, kinda fun. So that's what I'm gonna do. Alrighty, so I think we're pretty good here with our moose. And let's lighten that up just a hair. We'll go down to 50% opacity on that. Grab my darker color. <laughs> Look at me, I just selected my type, how silly. And then we're gonna go over here 
on a new layer and we're gonna draw. So we're gonna go one and a two. These are like those early 20th century cartoon eyes and comics eyes that you would see, you know? Still work in this century, they work fine. Just because something's older, you know, don't discount it. I'll be saying that about myself someday. Funny to have a little hair right there. Okay, down and over and up and over again. And here comes this crazy picking hand, right? Finger picking action there. Very nice, okay, get the little thumb right there underneath. So that hand is doing a lot of work. Come around to create our um, banjo, uh, what, do you, what do you call this part? The, the bass, I don't know. I don't even know what it's called on the guitar, honestly. The body, or... All the banjo players out there, weigh in. Give us some banjo terminology so we're educated. All right, now we got some other fingers here. We got a pinky wrapping around there. We've got another one, another one. And just take that first finger off, just because it looked cool. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five. Bup, 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 bup. Let's have that shirt puff out there where it's tucked in. Always good to add some folds, right, in your the clothing that you draw. And even the boots, why not? Kind of like that shape, you know? All right, and then down we go here. And you have some some grass, so we know it's an outdoor concert. feel like just I don't know why but I just want to give him like a little tuft of hair up there I just think that's funnier yeah let's do that um, and there you have a moose playing banjo how about that how about that it worked out but you know I love all your suggestions and I hope that um, you'll just keep making them what would the show be without your wonderful suggestions for the animal and activity game? It's always something different. It's always something challenging for me, and I love it. Alrighty. Ta-da! What do you think? There he is. Okay. That worked out great. Um, you know what you can do now? Say bye-bye to that sketch, and uh, then we can just take our scuba friend, or he's not scuba really, but just a little snorkeling friend or just a mask wearing friend. And we can say, look at our work from today. We did well today. We all drew some fun stuff. And we learned a little art vocabulary, a little trompe l'oeil. Um, I'm sure many of you already knew that, but maybe you didn't. And if you did um, learn something today, then I'm extremely happy about that. Uh, it's always nice when we get to learn a little something together. Look, I just want to throw in a little environment here because we got a minute or two. See that? Isn't that fun? 
All right, gang. Well, hey, thanks for joining me again for uh, another draw along episode. Hope you enjoyed that. And uh, remember, you can always watch these back and you can slow them down if you want. You can do whatever you like, but you can draw from now about 100 of these. And um, they're made for all ages and all skill uh, levels. So I hope that um, you're enjoying these as much as I am. Tell a friend and uh, bring them along to draw next time. And uh, until then, take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Remember to be kind. And I'll say ciao for now.